If you've been tuning into the Republican political arena, you've probably been hearing the word woke a lot. This woke self-loathing has swept our country. It's a phrase many on the right are using to describe the far left. The woke is the new religion of the left. The so-called war on woke has become front and center, but a new poll suggests Americans are split on what it actually means. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines woke as being aware of and actively attentive to important societal issues. The idea was challenge the status quo, fight against systematic and systemic oppression to try to create create a better world. The slang phrase gained popularity in the Black Lives Matter movement back in 2014, but it was used by this African-American novelist as far back as 1962. Meanwhile, conservatives have used woke to describe left-wing liberal agendas and policies, though there's no universal meaning within the GOP. These poorly performing woke financial scams are radical left garbage that would never be funded on their own. A USA Today poll framed woke into two definitions. It found 56% of Americans associated the word with being aware of social justice, while 39% said it means to be overly politically correct. What does woke mean to you? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to head over to straighterornews.com where it's unbiased, straight facts. For this one, we're gonna get to know the man, the myth, and the legend known as Lead Belly, and I can only give you about this much of it. So if you're ready, let's go. Lead Belly? Well, he was a man who wielded and mastered the 12-string guitar while traveling through the racist and economically desperate parts of the U.S., performing folk and blues songs and getting into fights. Huddy William Ledbetter, better known as Lead Belly, was born in the late 1880s on the Jeter Plantation in Mooringsport, Louisiana. At a very young age, he showed an early interest in music, and his first instrument was an accordion that he got from his uncle, and he went on to learn various instruments, some of them being the 6 and 12 string guitar, the mandolin, piano, and harmonica. Around 1912, when he was in Dallas, he met a young street musician named Blind Lemon Jefferson, and the two teamed up to play around the city, and it was during this period that a 12-string guitar named Stella became his trademark. Now, Huddy, he was known to have a quick temper, and it was this trait that got him into a lot of trouble throughout his life. In 1918, he was arrested, charged, and convicted of murder, and it was while he was in prison that he gained the nickname Lead Belly. And it just so happened that in January of 1924, he sang for the Texas governor, Pat Neff, and he included a song which asked for a pardon, and the following year, he was granted that pardon. After settling back in Louisiana in 1930, he was charged in a stabbing incident and sent to Angola prison where he was sentenced to 10 years. As luck would have it, a folklorist by the name of John Lomax, who was working for the Library of Congress and his son Alan, discovered Lead Belly in prison and together they worked to earn him an early release and once successful, they arranged tours of Eastern colleges and helped publish a book of 48 of his songs. And his music, it spanned a range of topics like prison life, racism, folk songs about cowboys, field songs and dancing, and he also wrote songs about people in the news. Did you know that some of his protest songs included racial segregation on the Titanic, as well as a cheeky attack on Adolf Hitler? At one point, he signed with American Record Corporation, but they didn't market him well, so he didn't sell well. So he ended up going to New York, where he got into another stabbing incident in 1939 and served another short prison sentence. After his release, he appeared on two radio series, Folk Music in America and Back Where I Come From, and he even landed his own short weekly radio show. He also recorded an album called The Midnight Special and other Southern Prison songs before moving to the West Coast a few years later. In 1948, Lead Belly recorded what would later become known as his last sessions, a definitive document of the life and music of the king of the 12 string guitar. In 1949, he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease and passed away on December 6 at the age of 61. Lead Belly's legacy is extraordinary and his fame immediately increased after his death. Good Night Irene went number one after the Weavers recorded it. Artists like The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Eric Clapton, Janis Joplin, Bob Dylan, Kurt Cobain, Frank Sinatra have all noted that their influence came from Mr. Lead Belly. Hi, Benji here, and this is how the term woke has been co-opted to enable oppression. Stay woke was first used by African Americans in the early 20th century to encourage each other to be aware of racially motivated threats. For example, blues musician Lead Belly used the term in his 1938 protest song, Scottsboro Boys, about nine black teenagers who were falsely accused of a heinous crime by two white women. And the idea that black people need to be awake has been advocated by people like MLK in the 60s, Spike Lee in the 80s, and Erica Badu in 2008. That's the meaning that was why 
widely popularized in 2014 with the BLM movement. End has since expanded to describe seeking awareness regarding social issues and injustices. However, wokeness more recently has unfortunately been co-opted by conservatives. It's often used to denigrate marginalized people and their advocates by misrepresenting them as hyper-aware disruptors. The intention is to further enable oppression by portraying the fight for equity and justice as toxic and harmful to society. Contemporary progressive discourse has its faults, but it's in everyone's best interest to seek information and not to remain ignorant to injustice. The right for oppressed people to live freely and have their humanity valued also isn't toxic. So it's important to push against the appropriation of the term and stay woke. Hope that helps. Bye. Otherwise, and uh, tell us something about how you came to make up that song. And you know the Scottsboro Boys, don't you? Haven't you met them? Tell who they were and uh, what their case was and how you met them. Yes, ma'am. Miss, I'll tell you all about the Scottsboro Boys because we had a seal once. And the Scottsboro Boys both got out and down that hard world. That Alabama's a hard world down there. And the Scottsboro Boys had a long time, six years that time, them four boys would got out. And I met them, and the boys had such a hard time, and I've been through down in that, old, that hard world, but I didn't stay long. And when I saw the Scottsboro Boys, I shook their hand and began to thinking about and hear what I said about the Scottsboro Boys, because I know they had a hard time. And here's the advice I give Joe Lewis, and this is the advice I give to all the Harlem colored people, and what I mean all the good colored people. Alabama, and you better watch out. The landlord gets you gonna jump and shout. Cosmos, Cosmos, they tell you what it's all about. Call them landlords, they'll get your boy to go hang you. Go to Alabama, and you better watch out. The landlord gets you gonna jump and shout. Cosmos, Cosmos, tell you what it's all about. Well, I'm gonna be a talk to a joke. Well, I'm gonna 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 talk to a joke. Well, Alabama, and you better watch out. The landlord gets you gonna jump in and shout. Gospel, 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 What did the Scottsboro boys do anyway to get in all this trouble? Well, they was down there and they supposed to have been riding in a, on a freight train. And they were riding in the boxcar and they run up on some white women. They was had on pants and they was riding too. All the supposed to have been beaten away up to uh, coming this way. And so down in Alabama, I guess the train stopped in the yard down there somewhere. Well, and some of them found all the boys and girls in the same boxcar. Some was different cars. And so I guess it's some of the people down there, they just said, well, you see them boys now with them white women, that was the trouble about it. Then they went out and made some, like, some loud cry about the boys being there with the women, you see. That is all it was to it. They just saw the women. They didn't see nothing else wrong. But anyhow, they put the boys in jail, and it's in that six long years. Well, the state, all the whole United States got together, and they got out for them in the company of New York, 
And the lawyer what got him out, I know him pretty good. I've met him. And uh, he showed me the Scottsboro Boys, and I shake hands with him. So I made this little song about down there. So I, I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through that, but stay woke, keep their eyes open. <laughs> 